Welcome to our Sage BusinessWorks tutorial on preparing your payroll for the new year. Prior to processing the first payroll for the new year, there are several items you should check to verify the information is correct. The topics we will be covering in this tutorial include installing your tax table updates for the current year, updating your SUI rate, reviewing your taxable status of deductions and other pays, verifying employee information, and updating vacation and sick hours. Let's first discuss the tax table updates. Tax table updates are provided by SAGE twice a year and will be available for download from the SAGE customer portal. The early tax table update is released mid-December and a later tax table update in early to mid-February. The early tax tables will include federal and state income tax updates that were received by SAGE prior to the deadline. The late update will include the additional federal and state changes that were received by SAGE. A word of caution, you will want to make sure you have processed all your year-end tax forms before you install the tax table updates. Because the updates include the taxes for the new year, installing prior to processing your year-end W-2s can cause discrepancies. Next, you should review and update your company SUI and SDI rates. The SUI rate is provided to you by your state. You will need to update your Sage BusinessWorks rate in Payroll, Taxes, Activate States. If your state has an SDI tax rate, you will also update the new tax rate in Activate States. The SDI and SUI taxes are percentage-based taxes. If you did not receive your new rates from your state prior to processing your first payroll and the taxes were either over or under withheld, the program will automatically self-adjust the tax liability on the next payroll checks. A word of caution, the SDI and SUI limits in payroll taxes maintained tax tables are used to set the default values for newly created companies only. The rates in maintained tax tables are not used when calculating the SUI tax liability. Also, if individual employee wages have already reached the SUI limit, Sage BusinessWorks will not self-adjust the tax. A manual adjustment will be required. Let's take a look at how we change the rates in the Sage BusinessWorks program. To update your SUI and SDI rates, we'll first go to Payroll, Taxes, Maintain Tax Tables. We select our state and click on the Allowances, Limits, and Rates. This is where the default rates and limits are updated by the program with the tax table updates. This is not the rate that will be used when calculating your tax liability. I'm going to go ahead and change my rate to 3.2 and say OK and save. You notice I get a warning that says I need to change the rates in the Activate States option. You have changed the SDI or SUI rates since these rates vary from company to company based on experience rates assigned by your state employment department. Sage BusinessWorks uses the SDI and SUI rates entered in the Activate States option to perform payroll calculations. Therefore, you must also enter the new SDI and SUI rates using the Activate States option. So we're going to say OK and close out of here. We're going to go to Payroll, Taxes, Activate States. From the lookup, we select our state and say OK. And now we change our rate to 3.2. If your state is also subject to SDI, you can update the SDI rates in the Activate States as well. One important note I want to mention your rates in Activate States and Maintain Tax Tables need to be entered as a percentage. If the notification you receive from your state is in decimal format, you'll want to make sure you enter as a percentage when you enter the rate. Otherwise, your SUI calculations will be incorrect. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And that's how we update the SUI rates. 
prior to processing the first payroll of the year, you should check the taxable status of each of your deductions and other pays to ensure that they are set up correctly. An important tip, once a deduction or other pay has been used, you will not be able to change the taxable status. A new deduction or other pay will need to be created. Let's take a look at our deductions and other pays. Let's look at deductions by going to Payroll, Utilities, Maintain Deductions. The reason you should do this prior to processing the first payroll is because the totals for our deductions were zeroed out when we closed our payroll year. This allows us now to go in and make any changes to the taxable status of our deductions. As previously mentioned, once a deduction or other pay has been used, you will not be able to change the taxable status. A new deduction or other pay will need to be created. Let's look at the taxable status. When a deduction is set to a category of individual, this indicates that the deduction is an employee paid deduction. Placing a check mark in any of the taxable boxes indicates this deduction is subject to tax. Removing the check marks from any of the boxes indicates the deduction is not subject to tax. If I change the category and make it company, this would indicate it's a company paid deduction. Placing a check mark in the boxes indicates this deduction is taxable to the employee. The amount of the deduction would increase the employee's taxable pay. Removing the check marks indicates this is a company paid deduction and is not taxable to the employee. An example of a company paid deduction that would not be subject to tax would be a 401k employer match or, or the portion of the health insurance that is paid by the employer. You also should check the taxable status of your other pays under payroll, utilities, maintain other pays. Placing the check mark in the taxable box indicates the other pay is subject to tax. Removing the check mark indicates the other pay is not subject to tax. Another option you should verify is if the add to gross should be checked. Selecting the checkbox will add the amount of the other pay to the gross wages for the employee. If we clear that checkbox, the other pay will not be added to the employee's gross pay. If the other pay is not added to gross, you should also indicate that the other pay is not taxable for each of the taxes. The amount will not appear in box one of the W-2 form. If the amount of this other pay is to appear in box one of the W-2, you should check the add to gross. Next, you should verify your employee's information. You'll want to verify the employee demographics is correct. This would be information such as their name and address. Check to make sure the workers' comp codes and task codes that are assigned to the employee are still correct. You will want to update the employee's tax status and allowances for the new year. Add, edit, delete, or inactivate deductions or other pays for the employees. And you'll want to use the employee master list to get the detailed information about each employee. Let's take a look at the employee master list now. To access the employee master list, go to Payroll, Employees, Employee Master List. To access the Employee Master List, go to Payroll, Employees, Employee Master List. We can now review the information on the Employee Master List. Scroll down a little bit so we can see all the information. We can see that the demographics as far as address and their city, state, phone, social security number. Verify the pay period, their pay type, and their pay rate is still correct check to make sure the department, their task code and workers comp is still correct. You'll want to review their federal and state filing status. 
you'll want to review the vacation and sick pay hours over here on the right, make any changes to their yearly rates. If we scroll down a little bit, we also can see all the deductions and other pays that have been assigned to the employee. So we need to review and make sure that the deductions are still active and this is still the correct amounts. Right now we show the savings plan is still active at a rate of 10%. However, this year he wants to change that to 5%. So we'll close out of our employee master list and make our change to the employee under payroll employees maintain employees. Remember our employee Akins wanted to reduce the amount of savings withheld from his paycheck to 5%. So we select on the deductions button, we select the deduction for the savings plan and we reduce it to 5% and we save our employee record. Reviewing and updating your employee information prior to processing your first payroll will help to eliminate errors that may not be discovered until the payroll checks have already been cashed. This is also the time to update your employee vacation and sick time. You want to verify that each employee's starting vacation and sick hours in Maintain Employees is correct. When you close the year in payroll, the ending balance for each employee's vacation and sick hours will automatically roll forward into the start balance. If you need to adjust the start hours, you can edit the hours manually in Maintain Employees or you can use the Employee Global Change to update all employees' starting hours or accrual rates. This is useful if you do not carry forward any balance from the previous year or if there has been a company change to the accrual rate for vacation or sick hours. An important tip, you can use the Vacation Sick Pay Report to review each employee's hours prior to processing the first payroll check. This will ensure the hours will be accrued correctly on each payroll check. Let's take a look at the software. To access the Vacation Sick Pay Report, we go to Payroll, Reports, Employee Reports, Vacation Sick Pay. We can review each employee's starting vacation and sick pay hours prior to processing our first payroll check. In our example, I need to correct Jeffrey Bernstein's starting vacation time. We'll close out of the report, go to Payroll, Employees, Maintain Employees. We'll select our employee Bernstein and select the vacation button. We need to change the starting vacation hours for this employee to 20. This gives a balance of 20 and will ensure that his vacation balance is updated correctly. I would also like to reset all of my employees start hours for sick pay to zero. Because I'm updating all of my employees starting sick pay hours, I can use the Employee Global Change. To access, we go to Payroll, Employees, Employee Global Change. Now, as a word of caution, you want to be very careful before you select the OK button. Once you select OK, the changes will take effect. For me, I want to update all of my employees and the data that I wish to change is going to be the sick pay start hours. I want the new value to be zero and I'm going to select OK. It's now updated all of my employees. If I now run my vacation sick pay report it should show that the sick pay hours start is zero for all my employees. Let's go to our payroll, reports, employee reports, vacation sick pay. 
and now all of the sick pay hours have been reset to zero. This is also the time to update any employee who has had a change to their vacation or sick pay rates. That would be in payroll, employees, maintain employees. You'll select your employee and click on the vacation button and here you would update their rate. If all employees rates are being updated to the same amount you can use the global employee change and update all employees. It's important the rate is updated prior to processing the first payroll check of the year in order for the Sage BusinessWorks product to calculate the accrued hours earned for vacation and sick pay. Thank you for joining us. This concludes our tutorial on preparing your payroll for the new year.